Grading cards have been very, very controversial lately, from concerns that CGC slabs are getting very easy to tamper with. The absolute easiest slab I have ever, 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 ever cracked. To PSA trying to buy the silence of another content creator. PSA told me to take down my recent video in exchange for the refunds that we agreed upon for them damaging my card. It's safe to say that uh, 2024 started off with a bang, and I'm gonna try my best to cover all the drama surrounding it. First off though, I'm so god dang sorry for the lack of uploads. No, I'm not sorry. Suck my dick. Pokemon grading companies. <laughs> I'm not gonna explain how grading cards works because you probably clicked on this video already knowing how it does. I've covered grading card drama a lot on my channel, and it's pretty safe to say these grading companies mess up a lot. Now, when I say these grading companies, I mean mostly PSA, CGC, and BGS. Now, they are the biggest grading companies, and no one has really been a competitor for them. Obviously, you have these other YouTuber grading companies like Ace Grading. Hey, listen, no offense to Randolph, who does that, but all I'm just gonna say, it's just not gonna really compare to the big three of grading, and that's just the truth. Grading at its core is a way for your card to be worth more than it is already, for it to be verified, and for its condition to be checked from 1 to 10. And what are people gonna do? They're gonna pick the company with the most brand recognition. I hate to be that guy, but an off-brand graded 10 will never be as valuable as a PSA 10 or BGS 10. That's just how it is, and it's how it's gonna be, okay? But I'm not gonna really talk about the off-brand grading companies for now. That is not really the problem. The real problem is actually the big three. More like two of the big three, CGC and PSA. Most of the drama is revolving around just them. And I'm honestly kind of surprised how little drama BGS gets. And actually, like, I, I don't really remember the last time they freaking messed up badly. I think overall, they do a very good job at what they're doing they're, they're doing the bare minimum as a grading company i guess i gotta applaud that now now watch them get themselves involved in some sort of drama right after i said that anyway let's get into our first bit of news a guy named java kuma got his psa cards damaged now guess what that damage was i'll give you a little hint i made videos about this certain topic and how it's been affecting a lot of people before Yes, you are correct. A lot of his cards were dinged at the top right corner. And as I said before, a lot of people had this issue. And to sum it up, Java reached out to PSA to see if he could get some sort of compensation for the damage they did, you know, as he should. And PSA kind of proceeds to act like they got everything undercover and saying like, Hey, yeah, yeah, well, we got this. Don't worry about it. We'll give you some store credit for how much you pay to get your cards graded. And you know what? We're also on top of that. We're going to give you a free subscription to PSA for a whole year. <laughs> and if you don't know, PSA has a subscription service where you could get your cards graded for cheaper and etc. Get new deals. But the problem is, PSA at first didn't really say they were going to do compensate him for the actual damage they occurred. They didn't even say they did the damage, which is kind of douchey. Like, just imagine you send your PSA 10 worthy cards only for it to get damaged and downgraded into a 9. Just for them to be like, yeah, here's off uh, a year off for a membership plan and like $90 in store credit the next time you grade your cards. Like, it's a slap in the face, man. Like, give the man some cash. On a good note, though, Java did end up getting a $150 voucher, which is a good thing. But again, it's kind of dumb because it's obviously PSA's fault. And no, it's not a one-time thing, too. It's not like, oh, it probably got damaged in the mail. So many people were affected by this same thing. If I had to guess, it's obviously some sort of PSA machinery defect or something. But here, here gets the interesting part. And sadly, this story doesn't actually end. So recently, Java did a follow-up video saying that after agreeing with the compensation he would receive, they sent him a document or agreement to sign, and while doing so, he realized in the agreement, it stated, that the customer couldn't make any actions or any statements, written or oral, that would defame PSA. And if he did that, he would breach the contract, and all the compensation they agreed upon would be null and void. Now, obviously, I think this is a standard thing for PSA. I don't think they really realized this particular YouTuber, Java, was very vocal about his discontent with PSA and how they handled uh, the damaging of his cards. I think they just give this agreement to everyone who have like similar issues. But basically, Java asked one of the associates and well, they pretty much confirmed and said, yeah, he couldn't do any other videos regarding the topic. And even the ones he already did would need to be removed if he did indeed sign the contract or the agreement. Obviously, Java decided not to sign the contract and all the pretty much compensation went down the drain. But I can also pretty much respect it. If I were in his same position, I wouldn't sign it either. Like if I want to talk shit about PSA online, I will talk shit about them and just think it's just not really worth keeping the discontent to yourself. Sorry to Java. 
Uh, hate today he had to go through all this, but I respect him for not getting bought out by PSA. The second piece of drama is in regards to CGC. Now, this one's kind of hilarious, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But basically, Pokemon Knowledge Cards live streamed saying, allegedly, that you can reseal CGC slabs. And not just the old ones, in fact, but the new ones as well. Now, I'm sorry, PK, but when I was watching your rant about this whole thing, I was on 2x speed, and I gotta say it's the most hilarious thing I've ever saw in my life. The absolute easiest slab I have ever, 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 ever cracked. This thing is perfect. This thing could come off the fucking CGC assembly line right now. Look right there. There's no corners. It's the newest slab. Brand fucking new. So for everybody out there who told me PK starting drama just to start drama, suck it. Because this was the easiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. It took me less than 30 minutes. And I had no room for error. None. I will tell you, I did mess up on one thing. Now, he did the same experiment with PSA and BGS. And they were both fine. When he cracked them open, you could see, obviously, a lot of issues. Wear and tear, I guess. So that way, if they were resealed, people would automatically realize that they were indeed resealed. But with CGC, on the other hand, you barely could tell. Actually, without anything. Now, the reason why this is bad is... It's because people are going to try to gain the system, okay? You don't really need me to explain why this is, isn't is a good thing. It's the same thing as me saying learning how to reseal Pokemon cards flawlessly without people realizing is a bad thing. You already know it's a bad thing. People are going to try to gain the system, scam you, uh, maybe change the grade to a 10 for their personal collection or to sell it online. You obviously understand the problem here, okay? I've seen a few worries that this possibly isn't true and a lot of people don't have the balls to crack open a slab but i personally believe pk pk has really no reason to lie about it in my opinion i think you'll be able to crack open a cgc slab with ease they had this issue before and they still didn't fix it but yeah this is just very concerning because it means people are going to try to take advantage of this and i highly suggest cgc to do something about it Anyway though, moving on to the last piece of news, Opossumba did a two videos about the topic and definitely recommend checking out his whole in-depth explanation of everything. But to kind of summarize it, there was a guy on Reddit who posted this photo of the Charizard Delta Species card that he got back from PSA and straight away, <laughs> yeah, that's not a 10, man. <laughs> like, this is a very damaged looking card and for some god knows reason, this was a 10. Now, I have a few theories. I think what happened here could be a typo. Maybe the McDonald's employee, oh, sorry. So I meant PSA employee made a typo. And instead of putting up a PSA one, they accidentally added another zero to it. So instead of a one, they put a 10. And that's probably what happened in my opinion. But the fact it went through all the quality checks without anyone pointing out that it's blatantly wrong is kind of hilarious. PSA employees are not animators in Japan that work for freaking 20 hours a day. They can't even see their families. They can't be working that hard not to realize that something is obviously wrong. But you know who I think is the most douchiest person in this situation? Not PSA, but this shit take on Reddit. If you contact PSA, they will pay you out a value of a 10 for its return. Seriously? Have you had this happen before? Yes! Sell it to a friend for market price. Have this party contact PSA and demand a payout for the difference in value between the actual grade and the grade displayed. PSA will require you to send the card back to be re-slammed to the correct grade and pay you at the difference in price. I believe there needs to be a sale between two people before they will honor this. It is their grading standard guarantee. Do not sell for anything less than a PSA 10 price. Dude, it's not a PSA 10. Just because you're selling it for a PSA 10 price doesn't mean the card is a PSA 10. It looks like a PSA 1, man. In fact, it, it was supposed to be a PSA 1, as I stated before. He's basically saying, sell it to someone you know, and that way, your friend can contact PSA saying, oh, somebody sold me this card for PSA 10 price, I demand a regrade and compensation, and then you'll get the difference in value between the actual grade and the grade displayed. It's just... It, it, freaking mind-boggling like this is some borderline evil stuff okay this is a sin <laughs> it's not a sin but like good god it's a, it's so it's kind of a douchey move in all i think psa really messed up bad here to begin with and the fact this redditor guy <laughs> had it happen to him before also kind of gives more backbone to the problem at hand it kind of delegitimizes the worth of psa 10s depending on how actually common this problem is if it's once in a blue moon it's fine 
But if this keeps happening, man, that's just not a good thing and will delegitimize 10's value as a whole. Anyway, that's all I have to cover. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Again, sorry for all the delays in content. I've been really busy with other things, but hopefully I could get back to the nice good schedule for y'all. Anyway, thanks you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you later, weebs. <laughs> I'm